When it comes to mobile photography, a lot of folks give higher priority to one device over the other, giving precedence to its camera. While on the other hand, people are very specific about the third-party camera app that they use to get the best control on the images. Finally, there are gazillion image editing apps on the App Store and Play Store which can be cheap, free and even drowned in ads to few which are apps of choice for professional and beginners alike. And in between all these, we have to rely on the gallery app or the file manager app provided by the device OS to organize the images. Let's check out if there is one stop solution for all these. Hey folks, this is Shiv. In this video, we are going to explore Adobe Lightroom Mobile and I'll be sticking specifically to the Android version and figure out how it fits our mobile photography needs. Lightroom Mobile has undergone noticeable improvements since the time it was first launched 3 years back. Before we begin, couple of quick pointers. One has to keep in mind that the latest changes that is available in the iOS, especially the details tab and the highlights warning have not been ported to the Android OS yet, but it's just a matter of time we will get to see it here also. Secondly, if the user has a Creative Cloud subscription, then upon logging into the account on the Lightroom mobile, he or she can sync the photos back across all the devices like desktop and iPad, but we'll stick to ourselves to the confinement of mobile device and someone who is using this app as a standalone. Let's have a look at it from three different aspects, organizing the photos, editing the photos, taking the photos. Let's begin with organizing photos. This is one feature which most if not all of the photo editing apps lack. Ability to organize photos into folders so that one does not have to keep scrolling in the gallery to get the right photo. All the photos taken using Lightroom mobile app gets by default moved into the all photos folder. But we can go into the folder and click on the required images and put it into a separate folder called collections. The best part about this organizing is that you can have a collection based on certain themes or subjects like portraits, architecture, family, etc. And editing photos in one folder will have no impact on the photos in the other folders. Next up is the editing photos. I think it goes without saying much that Lightroom was one app which was and is always primarily used for editing and the features within Lightroom Mobile will not let you down. Lightroom Mobile comes with a plethora of options to perform editing. One can start with as simple as cropping the photo to make it suit for a certain social media need. Here the coolest thing is the straighten photo option in the menu, which detects the horizontal and vertical lines within the image and does a very good job in leveling the image. Talking about leveling, I'll come back to one more cool leveling option when we move to the third section. Once done with the cropping, one can move directly to the lighting where we can do a very detailed control on the exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights and much more. Here you can even choose auto mode to let the app decide what needs to be corrected, else take the advanced step of using the curves to get the finer adjustment. White balance is one thing which most mobile cameras struggle to get close to being correct and the color tab is where your control lies. You can either use the drop down to choose from the preset values or use the color picker to choose the area which you feel is the reference point. This tab also has an option to get quick black and white and even selective color adjustment option. Last but not the least the effects tab which gives you option to bump up the clarity which in turn gives your photo more contrasty and grungy look. Just like the Lightroom for desktop there is even an option to adjust the haze using the dehaze slider. The vignette slider is obvious but scrolling up a little bit shows finer controls that even that comes with. Surprisingly, this tab also has a control for split tone which gives you an option to do selective color toning for shadows and highlights separately. Personally, would have preferred to see this in the color tab itself, but it doesn't do any harm here so why bother. But last but not the least, a lens profile correction tab which probably corrects the distortion from the image, but from what I've worked on in the Lightroom mobile till now, it hasn't come into picture yet. Oh yeah, one more thing, a reset button which will help you reset to a certain stage or all changes done to the specific photo. At this stage, either opt for the share option on the top right of the app to share it to social media directly or save it to the local gallery which is basically an export to be used later. But any changes done will be non-destructively saved within the app. Now the last thing, taking photos. While you might be ready to accept the fact that your mobile camera are nowhere near the super expensive interchangeable lens cameras, but they are good at what they do and that's the reason why folks like us invest so much on mobile phones with good cameras. The very first thing one can notice in the Lightroom mobile camera app in the top 
is DNG. Yes, Lightroom Mobile gives you an option to capture photos in compressed JPEG or uncompressed digital negative or DNG, which most mobiles don't offer natively. Secondly, at the bottom left next to the huge shutter button, you see a drop down with three options Auto, Professional, and HDR. Auto mode as the name says is fully auto mode with minimal or no control on the images except for the fact that sliding on the screen to the right or left gives you control on the exposure of the image. It's in the professional mode where things get interesting where you can get control on every single variable like shutter speed, ISO, white balance and even focus. The HDR mode is a bit tricky as it expects the camera to be steady as it takes images in different exposure and blends it to give a single resultant file. Tapping on the three dots on the right will give an additional settings like image aspect ratio, the timer and some additional option for an on-screen display. The on-screen display has two specific features. One the grid which you can choose from three different options but the level is what I felt very useful. It will help you level the phone on two axes to ensure that you don't get crooked images of the camera and that your horizon is always straight. The gear icon in the end gives additional options but apart from the geotagging, I didn't find anything much impressive out there. For those who fancy, there is even an option to take photos with certain pre-baked look embedded into the images like black and white, flat, warm etc. But these are things that can be done later in the editing also. By default, all the photos taken using the Lightroom mobile app goes into the all photos folder or collection and it can be moved to separate collection as per your need as explained before. So that's pretty much it for Lightroom Mobile App Overview. In my opinion, the app has evolved a lot over the last few iterations. I can see a significant improvement in what it can do for both photographers who use it as an app to work on the images imported and sync from the desktop version and also for the people who use their mobile to take, edit and post pictures on social media but who wants to keep things organized and have a better control. What are your thoughts on this app and do you think it can replace the native camera and gallery app on your mobile? Or if you are using something specific which can do all of the above three tasks, let me know your thoughts and opinion compared to what you are seeing with the Lightroom mobile app today. So this is me Shiv signing off and will be back again soon with something new from the world of photo and video tech. Keep smiling and bye for now.